Hej, hej, hallå, I'm Kråkan, also known as Corvus Cornix, and welcome to Jack. Yet another Crowcast where I pick a game, I play it for a week and not talk about it. This week's game is The Planet of Lana. It was released for the PS4 and PS5 and practically for every other <laughs> current console. It was released in 2024 and it's a puzzle platformer developed by Wishful Studios, published by Thunderful Publishing. Also, there'll be spoilers up ahead, just so you know, but first a little backstory. So I watched the YouTuber Gab Smolders play this game, so I watched about 28 minutes of it, um, I, like a full played through the game and I was like I want to play this so usually I spoil games by watching the entirety of a playthrough and then there's no point in actually playing the game is it? So this game was developed by a bunch of Swedes um, also there's an epilepsy warning so if you have epilepsy uh, stay away from this game so at the start of the game you have a couple of options play settings and credits so in the settings there's a lot of options for languages it's a crazy amount of languages not that you need it but it's there so the game starts out in a small little fishing village. So you're this kid sitting dangling your legs over a wooden structure, like a railing. So the character you play is called Lana and this other character you follow in the beginning of the game is called Eloy, your biggest sister. And throughout the game or further on you will come in contact with a small little monkey-like creature called Moi. Um, so I will talk about that when that comes up I guess. So your sister calls out to you and uh, this leads into a following and later into a chase where you more or less, it's like a tutorial section, you learn how to jump and climb and go down ledges and stuff. And the cool thing about this little fishing, fishing village is that it's on top of sticks in the water, so it's a cool concept. And if I tried to describe this game, it would be like the game inside, the gameplay wise you have like a 3D world that you move in like a side scrolling fashion forward and backwards. But it has like the art setting of another game that I play called Rim. So it's very colorful, very bright colors, you know, almost like a drawing, like a painting, pastel or like oil, very like artistic. There's also a sneaking mechanic that's introduced. You sneak by an old fishing lady that's uh, really aggressive, shopping up heads of fish. So this leads to the shoreline and you run up a hill chasing your sister you end up at a little graveyard i assume where she gets a little emotional and she gives you a hug and you chase her out to a plateau where you see what you think is like a meteor shower but it's actually a bunch of uh, evilly programmed space robots that well uh, they kidnapped your sister and you chase after the robots so you follow the robots to your own little fishing village where they others of your kind your people get kidnapped and you avoid the other robots searchlights and you hide underneath the structure and you try to chase after them as best you can uh, you go through a cave you wind up at an open place where you exhaustedly fall asleep and the next day you wake up and that's when the game title kicks in so during the next day there is some more platforming and you avoid a boar uh, so not in a traditional way like we think of a boar but that's what it is it has like one eye or something alien to it this game has a lot of tones of another game that I play called Another World where you have a familiar like landscape, trees and grass and flowers, but you also have alien uh, elements as well, which are really weird. So a bit further up you need to lure one of the boars down a cliff to its own death and you use the body of the now dead boar as a, as like a wait for a, for a button. There are these weird alien flowers that once you cover them up, they will extend a platform from a tree or from a ledge. Uh, it's really weird. It looks really uh, crusty, real crumpy. It makes a, um, <laughs> an uncomfortable sound when you walk on it. So later you help a little black monkey out of a cage because these robots are collecting all kinds of life, apparently. So this creature, this monkey uh, thing, is straight out of a Studio Ghibli cartoon, like the anime. Uh, there's a certain like style to it that I really like so you follow this monkey around and he even helps you in the end like give you like a rope so you can climb up a ledge and the friendship more or less builds over time until eventually you become friends and you actually command the, or uh, tell this monkey to do stuff so, like climb here stand here wait here and it becomes part of the puzzle mechanics uh, like I talked about the alien flowers before if you need to get this little creature called Moi to stand on these alien flowers so you can run across an extended alien arm or I don't know what to call it like branch so you need to call the monkey over to there's like a whole mechanic to it and uh, there's even a part later up in the game when you need the little monkey creature Moi to climb on a drone 
that you you know hacked or taken over uh he needs to get up on that in order to bite off like an electrical cable but you need to turn off the current so he doesn't get electrocuted uh i don't know it's kind of funny the the puzzle mechanics are kind of cute so later in the game you go through caves and system you lose track of your little friend and there are a lot of other abilities that unlocks with this monkey because it's not all what you see is what you get. There are a lot of things. He actually has this ability to hypnotize certain enemies and um, make them obey him and so what and so on. So you eventually end up in a desert and eventually you get up on the alien ship in order to reprogram the, a the alien uh, space robots to be nice. So um, I really spoiled this game for you, but... Uh, I don't know. It was a, it was a short game. It was like you completed in like less than four hours if you play casual, and I can really recommend it. So gameplay: go through the world, look for your sister, and avoid the uh, evil robots. Control the D-pad or left stick moves Lana around. The X button jumps. The L2 or L1 button ducks, crouches. The square button is grab. The circle button commands the monkey, and the option button pauses graphics this game was made in a unity engine and it looks like um a bit of like a cell shaded painting style of a game in motion if that makes sense so as i said before it remind me of the art style in rim this other game i played and uh, it also has these animation when uh, lana jumps it reminded me of the first prince of persia game it's like the rotoscoping mechanic that they had to achieve that effect sound of music takashi furukawa made the music for this game so I like how the music follows the actions to a, to a straight where if you're alone, like walking, it's calm and when the robots are chasing you, they become super dramatic. Easter egg secrets and glitches. So when I first encountered the monkey Moy, I accidentally left him behind. I, I don't think the mechanic of controlling him was introduced. So uh, I went a little bit too far and the game wasn't having it, so I was pushed back. So I think that... It was a little bit of a glitch or a bug at work. I, I honestly couldn't tell. But I hovered in the air for a bit and got pushed back. And I was like, okay, I'm supposed to go back, but you don't have to be so forceful about it. So in conclusion, I wrote, yes, play it. It's a visual treat. So if you like games like Another World, uh, this will be right up your alley. It, there are plenty of checkpoints and the puzzle in these games are really forgiving. So if you fall off a cliff, there's a checkpoint just there. So you don't have to backtrack a whole lot. Uh, it's a visual treat, the music and the visuals. It looks like you're watching a painting that is in moving motion. Really pretty. And uh, yeah, it's a good game. I can totally recommend it. So anyway, thanks for listening and watching and take care.